a Canadian radio sanctuary podcast. A true gem on the Granville Mall is the classic Orpheum Theatre. Theatre historian Doug McCallum is arranging tours of the 60-year-old building. The Orpheum is a standout, no question. McCallum tells us a bit about the man who ran the building for a long time. Well, uh, Ivan Ackery was a, a, had a genius for uh, promotion. He, it happened to be movies he was promoting, but he probably could have sold just about anything. His, his pr- promotion campaigns were so inventive and wacky and, and wild that they uh, made him ultimately the most uh, awarded theater manager in North America. Because in those days, the motion picture industry had two ways of selling movies. They didn't have television. They had movie stars, whose name could sell a picture, and they had the local movie theater managers, who had a lot more power and authority than they have now and were responsible for promoting the film. What were the years? From 1935 through 1969. So 35 years in all. And before that, he he ran the Strand and uh, the Dominion and various other theaters for famous players. Former manager Ivan Ackery, who is now 88 years old and lives in West Vancouver, started in the silent film days at the Orpheum. He was a singing usher. That's kind of the way Dave Pratt got into the business. The beautiful structure was the home away from home for popular manager Ivan Ackery. Now retired at 88, he lives in West Van. In fact, they had to practically drag Ackery out of the Orpheum. They, uh... Made him retire at age 70 back in 69. He loved his work. He couldn't get him away from the place. The award-winning operator gave many entertainers their big breaks. As theater historian Doug McCallum points out, the hypnotist Ravine was one of Ackery's discoveries. Well, Ivan used to um, used to spend his uh, vacations frequently up at Harrison and uh, Chilliwack area. And Ravine, at that time, this was back in 1962, Ravine was an unknown hypnotist, and he was scratching a living by hypnotizing golf players to improve their golf game. And Ivan met him and was impressed with his uh, genius for spotting talent and what would sell. He booked Ravine into the Orpheum for eight straight weeks, and people thought he was he was out of his mind. But Ivan put the, the show over to such an extent that the run was sold out, and Ravine became a big star. He discovered Juliet and uh, had a lot to do with her early success. Well, another of the stars is actress Yvonne DiCarlo, who later gained fame and fortune in the TV series The Munsters. The Orpheum Theatre has presented great performers over its six-decade history on Granville Street. Thanks largely to longtime manager Ivan Ackery, shown in an Orpheum office wall photo. It's a classic. He's pictured alongside Marilyn Monroe when she was in Vancouver in 1956. To fill us in on a little bit of that, theater historian Doug McCallum. Marilyn Monroe uh, came here to promote Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, which was showing at the Orpheum. But again, this was a common feature during Ivan's years because he, on his various trips down uh, to pick up awards in New York and L.A., he got to know uh, a lot of the movie industry people, a lot of stars. Uh, Gary Cooper became a friend of his. And he would, uh, he would take any opportunity to bring them to the Orpheum to make personal appearances before, before the film. In fact, the lane uh, out behind the office where we're now sitting, which used to be Ivan's office, it became known as Ackery's Alley because Ivan used to let these stars out into the alley where a, a car could be waiting for them and they'd avoid getting mobbed, if they, which would have happened if they'd left by the stage door. So uh, I think it was Pearl, Pearl Bailey who nicknamed it Ackery's Alley. And there's a centennial plaque up there now to commemorate it. In the late 1920s and through the 30s, the Orpheum was part of a huge vaudeville network, very big. Uh, Bob Hope and Jack Benny were two of the bigger names to appear on the Orpheum stage way back then. Theater historian Doug McCallum, who plans to give tours of the 60-year-old Orpheum Theater on Granville, says famous players intended to gut the interior of the grand old building. Back in 1973, they were going to clean out its insides and turn it into one of those six mini-theater complexes. Oh, my heart is breaking just the thought of it, but Vancouverites protested, sending 8,000 letters to the mayor. The the Save the Orpheum campaign began. Uh, There was a lottery, uh, donations flooded in, the federal and provincial governments kicked in some money, the city of course 
paid a large chunk of it. Where we are now is the Granville Street entrance. Is this the original entrance then? Yes, this was the original entrance to the Orpheum. Uh, and there's a, there's a reason for that. It, people often wonder why the entrance is on Granville Street and why the, the theater itself is over on Seymour Street. But at that time, Granville Street was the main street of Vancouver. But land was expensive on Granville Street. So they bought this narrow little strip about 23 feet wide on Granville and put this uh, opulent entranceway in and then they, they had a bridge over the lane leading to the theater on Seymour Street where land was cheaper. The architect, Marcus Patika, designed the Orpheum in the late 20s with the aim to, quote, make it look like a million but have it cost half that amount. The trend is to bring back the movie house atmosphere of the golden age of cinema, the 1930s and 40s, when movie going was a major event with the decor of the theater often upstaged to what was on the screen. If it was a movie like Bedtime for Bonzo, for example, uh, the 60-year-old Orpheum on Granville Street is such a grand palace and close to the heart of theater historian Doug McCallum. Anything you can tell us about these pillars here, this sort of a yellowy, creamy color? I mean, now this is something that right away gives you the feeling of the old big movie houses. Yes. Well, it's uh, all fake. It's all... Um Imitation. It, it's this is supposed to be travertine. Well, and and it and uh, to to most of us, that's what it looks like. Uh, it's it's very well done, but it's it it's uh, artificial. And so much of these movie palaces is. It's a grand illusion. It's it's plaster pretending to be uh, uh, marble, or it's uh, it's cast stone pretending to be solid stone. And, and uh, it's all to create an illusion of, of um, aristocratic luxury and elegance and make it available to, uh, to everybody. The move is already underway to bring back the movie palaces, if you will. The Cineplex Odeon chain, under the guidance of Toronto's Garth Drabinsky, is bringing back some glamour and elegance in their new theatre designs. With some new movie theater companies striving to return the marvelous image of the old theater houses that look like palaces, there's still nothing like an original. The 2,800-seat Orpheum on Granville fits the bill. Theater historian Doug McCallum recalls the childhood magic there. I remember coming in here, I must have been about five or six, uh, to the Saturday movie matinees, and just being overwhelmed by the, the size and grandeur of the place to it. To a child of that age, it seemed like you were entering a magic world. Part of the fantasy lies in the architecture. McCallum and I went up to the top, right up to the rafters on the ceiling, above and behind the chandelier. It's just another concrete box, folks. The architect found a way to make a concrete and uh, steel girder building beautiful and warm and atmospheric in instead of cold and, and inhuman. So he, he has hidden all the structural elements of the building. So we're now looking at them. The building is supported by a network of steel girders. And then from those roof girders, hundreds of wires, large steel wires, are hanging down. And the, the whole uh, interior ceiling of the auditorium, including that magnificent dome that we were looking at from below, is hanging from those wires. It's suspended. It's a false ceiling. Doug McCallum says he plans to give public tours of the Great Orpheum Complex. 